What is up, everybody? I am officially back vlogging, which is obvious because this is what you're watching right now. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, but I am very excited to be back doing this again. Very excited to be vlogging on a weekly schedule. I am currently in Simsport at my parents' house. Amanda and Allie and I are here. Uh, we're the family for Thanksgiving. So, I'm actually going to kind of stop this video for a second because I am starving and I'm about to go munch down on some good old-fashioned Thanksgiving dinner. So, yeah, I'll be right back. as a pregnant tick. Like, no joke, that food was amazing. Mom, if you're watching this, thanks for knocking Thanksgiving dinner out of the park. It was like the best dinner since, well, last year's Thanksgiving dinner. But anyway, it was amazing. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a garage right now filming this. Uh, it's my dad's actually messy garage, and I'm filming it in here because, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of awkward to talk in front of a camera in front of your family still. Um, still trying to work this whole vlog thing out and be less awkward with it. So yeah, I'm in a garage. But that's not the point of this week's video. This week's video, I'm actually talking about what comes after Thanksgiving dinner. And I'm not talking about Black Friday. I'm not talking about Cyber Monday. I'm actually talking about leftovers. If your family is like my family, then you probably have a ton of leftovers after Thanksgiving dinner. And if your leftovers are anything like our leftovers, they're even better the next day or even better that evening. Have you ever just walked by the turkey and grabbed a big turkey leg and like dipped it in mashed potatoes and then like kind of topped it off with some gravy and then just munched on that? Yeah, that's our family. So the leftovers. And as I was thinking about leftovers today, I actually began thinking about this scripture in John. Let's check it out, let's read it together. John 6 says, And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. That word fragment right there is actually broken pieces. And I thought it was interesting that Jesus would say, Gather up the broken pieces so that nothing would be lost. It got me to thinking about this vlog this week. You know, the leftover meals are just as good, if not better, than the actual meal itself. And that is how it is with broken people. Uh, if you've been broken, if you have made mistakes, or someone has broken you, or you've gone through a breaking season, or anything terrible has happened in your life, you are just as valuable as you were before. And if God himself clothed in flesh through the man Jesus would be that passionate about some broken pieces of bread and some fish, I tend to think that he would be just as passionate and even more passionate about you who have been broken. If he was not willing to throw away broken food, then I can guarantee you he is not willing to throw away broken people. And I wanna, I, I wanna just kind of hone this in a little bit more. And I wanna read you one more scripture in Acts 27, talking about the Apostle Paul. It says, but striking a reef, they ran the vessel aground. The bow struck and remained immovable and the 
stern was being broken up by the surf. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners, lest any should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make for the land, and the rest on planks or on pieces of the ship. And so it was that they were brought safely to land. If you notice, Paul was brought safely to land on a broken ship. Pieces of a broken ship got him to a safe place. If you're going through a broken season, if you're going through anything right now, any frustration, any pain, if you've been broken by somebody, if somebody's disappointed you, if you have disappointed yourself and you feel like you've made too many mistakes to go on, I implore you to wrap your arms around the things that have broken you and let them carry you closer to God. Let them carry you to safety and understand that God does not throw away broken pieces. There's the story of a team of people who were building a palace in the Middle East, and they were going to put in the foyer mirrors lining the walls, lining the ceiling, and it was gonna be this grand entrance. So they put in an order of specialized mirrors to come in, and when the crates had arrived on site, the second they opened them up, out came thousands of pieces of broken mirrors. They had gotten broken in transit. So rather than take all the broken mirrors and toss them in the trash, the designer decided to take these broken pieces and to still put them on on the walls and on the ceiling. And what it did was it created a beautiful cascade effect of rainbows when the light would hit it. And it is one of the wonders of the world right now. When you walk into this palace, you will see that a designer repurposed broken mirrors to make a grand entrance. Our lives are to show that our designer is very skilled at taking broken pieces and he never throws it away, but he takes it and he reconstructs us. He takes our leftovers and he reconstructs us and he shows off his glory through us. Our mission going forward is to allow His glory to reflect off of our own brokenness. Testify of how you were a wretch undone, but now by the grace of God you've been restored. Testify how you've gone through the worst season of your life, but by the grace and mercy of God you're walking again. Let them know this is not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit. Testify of your brokenness. Don't be ashamed of it. Let the world see how God's people are beautifully and gracefully broken.